let's see if I can move this over if it'll let me. Nope, I'm gonna have to move the whole window. Okay. So I promised you some Endor. Uh, some I keep saying Endor. Uh, European Championship Day Two. We've got Kuhn versus Kieran. Uh, I don't know Kuhn's handle name. Kieran is Ketwall on Jemp. If you happen to ever play against him, that's the guy you're uh, you're talking about. That's Ketwall. So we've got Throne Room versus CCT will be our first game. Okay, so he's going to have the day one games done. Uh, he's going to work on some editing and getting those all cleaned up and posted. Uh, I'm kind of doing this rough cuts here, so I haven't watched really any of these. So we'll be learning together as we go as to how this stuff plays out. We're going to skip ahead a little bit because they take a while to get shuffled and set up. Uh, looks like it's only 32 minutes, so not uh, the longest of games. So we've got Security Tower and the uh, Carbonite Chamber. It's pretty good. Uh lighting and stuff here. A little bit of glare on this site. Uh, this little mat, table mat they have is pretty interesting for where they keep their effects and stuff off to the side. They've got a spot for their defensive shields. And uh, now this is the way the mechanic I think is drawn in the original rule book for which way to move your piles. But to me this feels very left-handed. Um, you know, you, you have your reserve deck, you activate your force, you spend your force, and then you recirculate it. Um, but to me that feels incredibly left-handed. So I always play it the opposite way. My reserve deck is here, and I always activate. And I think a lot of players do, too. Um, so when you see somebody doing it like this, you're just like, what the heck are they doing? But this is technically the right way to move your piles around. It's just I think that whoever designed that may just have been left-handed. That's my guess. Uh, maybe Brandon can ask somebody that during his documentary interview questions. Maybe it's come up already, and we'll find out in the documentary that uh, – you know, Raleigh or Jerry Darcy or one of those guys was left-handed. So, maybe not. Maybe that's just a random question that nobody really knows the answer to. Uh, I can't make the video any larger. That's as large as it goes. Actually, I lied. And hang on, i got to turn my light on because it's a little dark in here now. All right, so we've got carbonite, uh, carbon chamber testing, 12 cards start, uh, and it looked like he had to give him a uh, rebel. I didn't see which one it was, though. We can go back because it's not live. Who did he give him? Can we even see? He's already got a guy there. Uh, Bail Organa. Okay, so it was Bail Organa. We'll jump back ahead to finish. We don't have to keep watching them shuffle. So he gave up bail. All right, so he was doing bail for the Tanev to make it so it can't get hit by uh, laser cannon batteries, and plus you also get the extra destiny uh, for that. Usually you see that stuff more in uh, the map matchup. Some people like to play laser cannon battery or invasion. People like to play laser cannon battery on the capitals, uh, the finalizer, or the blockade flagship. And then when people just want to load up their Tanev, you, you, know, you just take a shot and take it down. It can also come in handy, I guess, against TTO and the uh, the Super Laser as well. Uh, throne Room, we got the stereotypical start, Walkling, Insurrection, Aim High combo, and Like My Father Before Me, and then CCT was the 12-card start. So Throne Room's obviously going to interact a lot more with this deck. They're going to go to the Carbonite uh, Chamber on Cloud City. They're going to try and prevent the Rebel from getting frozen, because when the Rebel gets frozen, uh, Light Side loses 8 Force, and uh, nobody really wants to have to deal with that or pay that penalty. So what they will... Uh, you know, Dark Side wants to go there. They want to get IG-88. Usually it's with the Dark Jedi, like a Dooku or an Emperor or something like that. And then they kind of, you know, keep him safe, and they'll kind of pile 
a guy or two up there. They'll use IG-88 when he's with the captive to start fishing cards out of the force pile to get the Darth Mauls, DPP Mauls, to get the Phantom Menace, to get the Destiny Adders or force fields or snipers or all the stuff that they need, the tools that they need to keep removing guys. Um, and Light Side is basically going to try and counter all that and try and rescue that guy and just shut down the whole mechanic. And Throne Room going first uh, certainly does give it an advantage in that aspect. We'll have an extra uh, turn or so to get some extra uh, locations and activation. They're going to get one, two, three, one for them is four to start, which isn't much, but I think they put the map backwards because you've got the dark side thing for where the defensive shields should go and the light side one on the other side, but that's cool. I mean, obviously, uh, they're not going to flip the mat or switch sides of the table during the game or whatever. So At, During one point in the match, it would have to be backwards, I guess. He got the boss Nash Chamber in his opening hand. That's why he used his Wisa to get the battle planes. Probably not going to go there anytime soon. Um, at least the first couple battles will probably take place here. If Lightside rescues the Rebel and stops this carbon freezing stuff and then gets, uh, you know, cleared off the site or whatnot, then you might see them go out, you know, just abandon that, give it up, and go to the uh, the battle planes to try and finish the game off. Um, Darkside's also going to pull the uh, audience chamber, so you might also see Lightside go set up there as well. Um, but n unless he's got the relatively unprotected card, the Destiny 7 card that basically uh, yeah, cuts the carbon freezing damage down to 1, uh, he'll be forced to go interact with them. If he has that card, which you can pull with Wackling, uh, but not everybody plays it. Sometimes card slots just get a little hard to find, but he got a docking bay, he got a Jedi Council chamber. So pretty good start for, for Throne Room here. Uh, he did not get throne roomed, as uh, some people like to say. Um, he got actually quite a bit of his activation. We can see in his hand there, he just thumbed past. It. He's got Luke Skywalker, and it looked like his lightsaber. Um, see a round kid, a couple other characters in his hand. I'm going to move some of these extra location, non battleground locations off to the uh, the outside here. Just, yeah, just get that crap out of here. Go stick that throwing room over there. Nobody's deploying to that stuff anytime soon. Uh, if you put the battle planes out, move Boss Nash Chamber over so at least they're related and people know that they're related. Um, but yeah. Uh, it looks like now Hutta from hand. Okay, that's interesting. And then there's the audience chamber. Sometimes we will see people, they will play the uh, Jabba's Haven card because they are pulling the audience chamber. So then they'll use Haven, which gets them now Hutta, which gets them a battleground system. So if they want to uh, do some extra draining and whatnot, they can, um, or just have an extra battleground to work with. And then it gives Jabba's Haven another function other than just being used to retrieve the guy. Uh, it does get you a little activation and, and uh, a place to go set up. I would expect, uh, who's playing which side? I would expect uh, Kieran to uh, not quite to force things, to rush things. He is going to throw caution to the wind and put Ig down, though. I uh, can't quite see everything in his hand, whether or not he's got defensive cards like barriers and stunning leaders. Uh, but he would certainly need to, as, <laughs> as Light Side's reading Jar Jar right now, who deploys without presence um, and could pretty much insta-kill Ig. Uh, Jar Jar versus Ig is not very a very good fight for IG. <coughs> yeah, that was Jar Jar. You always got to figure there's, I mean, Light Side's got Jyn Erso and Corrin Horn in pretty much most of their decks. So that's a pretty risky move. Um, there's usually, he's got Projective Telepathy in his hand. 
So that'll help if uh, if light side over commits to the location. But I mean, they just activated four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One for them is eleven. Walkling is twelve. So I mean, he just activated twelve force. Um, you know, that's spy plus EPP. Whether it's Ray Obi, uh, you know, something like that. Um, that could certainly be more than enough. You could also see Spy plus Luke for 10. One to battle would be 11. Projective might get you out of that, depending on if you had any force saved or how much his Spy cost. Most of them cost 4, so. Except for this guy, because he's not really a Spy. <laughs> it's Jar Jar Binks! Yep, there's Binks. There's six for Jedi Luke. He's going to go look for a lightsaber. We know he's got one in his hand, but or at least look like he had one in his hand. But if you play two, you always want to get the one out of your deck if you can to increase your overall destiny and then, you know, increase your chance of uh, finding it. So... The projective would not save him in this situation. <clears throat> he drew his last card, so he can't Stunning Leader or anything like that. So he pulls the Weapons Display Shield, and then I guess he drew the last card. So that basically just says, all right, I'm not playing Stunning Leader. I don't have any Force. So he'll battle. There's the projective. He's got the two Force left. Now, Ig can cancel... Weapon Destinies targeting him. Um, does have to lose force to do it. He'll try and swing. That's a corn horn. And then that's a rescue in the clouds. So that would be a total of eight that would have hit. He does cancel the second one, so IG is not hit. <coughs> and I missed what that was, whether he just put something out of play or something, or... Well, looks like he's going to try to use Jar Jar's text just to end this. Light side. Oh, it looks like Dark Side drew an Emperor. Light side drew. Uh, Yoda. So Jar Jar actually missed, it looks like. And then Dark Side drew. Battle Destiny? Ig doesn't draw by himself. Yeah. So, all right, so Luke Effect was one force two. Yeah, right, Mike, you can't do that. Luke has to be a battleground to put a card from hand down. So uh, don't be like Brian Mischke and try that. Um, oh, he popped Decree. Is that what you... Oh, he put that out of play. That's the card he was that he put on the bottom. Um, okay. I missed him. I saw him tuck something. Out. I couldn't figure out what that was. That was Decree. Thank you. So then he gets a Battle Destiny, so he doesn't have to lose as much. Uh, Ig forfeits for five. He's power four. But, I mean, Dark Side draw, Light Side drawing a Jedi Luke, which is uh, seven, 15, 16, 17. What did he draw for Destiny? He drew a three, so he was seven. So he was down by ten, so it's basically Ig and five cards. Um, and then he's going to opt fairly wisely to uh, to send Bail to the used pile instead of rallying, uh, because then, as one, he has to pay more to move him over, and then two, should Luke something uh, befall him, like an all-too-easy or uh, a UR beaten or something, that would be... Uh, pretty pretty terrible. Uh, be sure and stay tuned after this game as well. We'll do some couple more set 11 spoilers in between each game. Uh, I'm going to try and do the quarterfinals and the semifinals tonight. Depending on how long these particular games are. We'll get at least the quarterfinals done tonight.
And that is, of course, the other uh, thing with live events. Sometimes people do make minor misplays as compared to our usual jump series. Darth Maul just took a run at Luke and came up short. And now they're going to get drained for three at that site and really start to fall behind. You'll also see Light Side probably reinforce Luke with another big character or two and then probably draw to get some more tricks back into hand. Yeah, pay to drain for three, which are going to get top decked. And uh, Dark Side has really fallen behind here. And this is usually what happens with. Uh, these types of mains battles. It just, it just becomes a tempo game. Uh, it, was a, it was a very risky move going down with Ig so early when uh, there's at least, you know, most light side decks are running at least two spies. Some of them are running even more because some people play Cassian. Some people play Jar Jar. Whether it's Throne Room or Hitco, those kinds of things. So, He's going to rescue in the clouds. Could also be a card to come in handy to help protect some of his young, his uh, smaller characters at uh, the Cloud City locations from getting hit. Uh, yes, yeah, Silver Glen. Kuhn versus Kieran, right up there at the top. You can't see it because I'm in full screen mode, but yeah, that's what that's what we're dealing with. And thank you for joining us way past your bedtime over there in very old England. I'm sure they missed you uh, at the tournament. Maybe you could have stopped Bastion from winning another one. No Silver Glen, no Crypto Fist. Like, what the heck kind of European Championship was this? Force drained again, peeling even more cards. Cornall, thank you for renewing your subscription. Seven months now. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. He's got a Boba Fett in his hand. He's shuffling through cards pretty quickly, so it's kind of hard to... Dude, you know you're being filmed. Thumb through your hand slower. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure... That was the other thing, too, with Emil with the finals. Uh, I wasn't sure what he was going to do with that situation. He's going to play see a round kid, go fish out any card he wants from his uh, force pile. Uh, if they were going to... How they were going to handle that. So, I think I was assuming if he lost the first game, then he would just say, "Yeah, congrats, Bastion, you win. I'm gonna go catch my flight home." Uh, if he had won the first game, I don't know how that, or if it was a really close first game, and the, you know he's gonna kind of predict what he expects to see the other matchup, and then go from there. But I had a feeling that at least there was a possibility maybe we would have uh, seen that finals played out on Jump or something. And still Luke just hanging out by himself. I kind of would have thought they might have committed, Lightside would have committed a little harder, but I guess they're uh, just not putting any more cards on the table than they need to. He's drawn for quite a few defensive cards, and he has a pretty good sized hand. He's got a clash. He's got a concentration. So but he also has like 15 cards in his hand. Now if we see a you are beaten, we see a stunning leader. So... I don't know if Light Side has a barrier. We can't quite see that. But they definitely have a Clash and a Jedi's Concentration. So Darth Maul is not scary at all. <laughs> He's going to try and surface defense for something. 
he's lost quite a few effects already. You know, he's already used Decree. He already lost Jabba's Haven. And I think no escape to when he took the uh, the overflow on IG. So, and Maul's gonna try again. He's got a sorry about the mess in his hand too. I just saw that as he went by. He's getting a shield. What's he want? The weapon live shield, maybe? Yeah, he's going to grab the weapon live shield. And I'll grab wise advice just in case anything gets canceled. It ends up going back in his deck, which just improves his overall differential. In a, uh, a match play situation is always pretty difficult. So he's not going to battle with Maul, because I guess he kind of figures. And he's going to play another Sea Year Round Kid. Yeah, between the Rescue and the Clouds and the Sea Year Round Kids, like, I don't think we're going to see a lot of people playing 3PO anymore. I don't think there's really just any need to play him and the Pullers. Uh, I think you've got enough other cards, nice, des useful Destiny 5 interrupts that can kind of facilitate getting other stuff uh, out of your deck. Yeah, I agree, Silver Glenn. This isn't the easiest match. This is a pretty rough matchup for CCT to begin with. Uh, and Kieran went super aggressive, turn one, Ig, and kind of got punished for it. So it uh, now is really just more about getting the numbers reasonable for game two. But it looks like he's got the sorry about the mess in hand, so he'll just pick him off and then pay to drain for three maybe. He's going to use Boss Nast to look and see what's in his reserve deck, get a peek at what his destiny numbers look like, we'll see what his chances are of hitting Maul. Mostly a pile of fives. A couple of, there's a Bale. Uh, looks like a Solo, a Hera. So, yeah, a handful of threes and a handful of fives. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty good chance that uh, you'll combo one and one of each together and pick them off for a total of eight. Dark side will go for the sense. Light side has a sense of their own, which they will grab. If nothing else, it takes a card away. So he senses, he gets the sense, he senses the sense, and then um, the sorry about the mess goes through with a five and a three for a total of eight. I think Bell's a three. He's at least a two. And then bam, hit, drain for three. And it's just business as usual for uh, another force push, another IG. So we had two force push. Okay. And light side basically just says, go. <laughs> it's like, you haven't been able to kill Luke yet. <laughs> so. That's Arica. I think that's the virtual. I think that's, an, yep, bottom right-hand corner, there is the virtual icon for her. And he's got a Boba Fett. That'll give him an extra battle destiny. And now he's got a power advantage. He verified the reserve deck. He did see a clash in there. So whether or not he's expecting his opponent to have two copies of clash is always a, a thing. But yeah, he'll let him battle, and then he'll clash Arika out of the battle and then beat the crap out of Boba Fett. Uh, unless there is an extra character coming down as well. No. Oh. Yep. He's just going to clash Arika. Yeah, 
maybe while I was yapping I missed the fact where he initiated the battle. I usually would wait until the battle is actually initiated to do that, but... See, he's got a Tanov in hand now as well. Yeah, I guess he must have initiated the battle. He's hit. He draws a 5, which becomes a 6. So we're looking at 14 to 7. Stubbly, thank you for subscribing. Month number one, thank you for joining us. Welcome to have, great to have you. Yeah, so he's peeling seven or eight more cards off his used pile and losing Boba Fett. And this is just, this is this is one of those quicksand games, you know. Once you, things start to go wrong and you just keep trying to struggle back against it and you just keep sinking faster. Uh, that is absolutely the best metaphor. Now he's basically just trying, he just drew up uh, everything he had in his force power. He's like, I'm, this game's over. I just have to just draw it up. You know, end it as quickly as I can before light side uh, finds a way to put more cards back. They're going to put a, drop a card with Luke. <laughs> Maybe put a guy or two out of hand, just cards that they don't need. Yeah, there you go. Throw a Tanev down. Spend a little force. Five. Who's that? Anakin. Uh, Chewy with Bowcaster, I think is who that is, piloting that. And uh, Ray. He's got like 12 cards left, dude. Stop take. You don't need a card out of your, your used pile. Does he even have enough force to deploy anything that you'd be scared of? We get Clash, and you are beaten, shielded. <laughs> and who did he just add there? Was that Solo as well? He just deployed everybody. Solo I can get behind, because that gets him access to both the Clash and the Sorry About the Mess out of his Lost Pile. Uh, definitely didn't need to draw cards. He put one back. Okay. He's, you know, if he's playing to win the game, and I get that, and uh, he wants to make sure he wins and doesn't get caught and get caught with the beatdown, and he's going to cut into his differential a little bit to do that because um, you don't want to give your opponent any additional opportunities um, to catch you with something big. But um, at the same time, you also have to start thinking ahead long-term, situational, differential. What can I do to make, to maximize every life force I can get Yeah, so, so Eric is back. That's what they're double-checking there. We get a Cure Canos. And a Lord uh, Darth Sidious. As well. Just bear with me for a second while this is going on. I just want to try and look something up. Because, of course, the results were posted. So we all know who won by now. But I won't spoil it and tell you in case you didn't see it yet. We'll let you... Uh, be surprised here. I'm looking to see if there's an update where they give the game by game no what the scores were sometimes we sometimes the people do that in between round you know games it'll be like oh here's who's playing now here's who won game one by X and 
Yeah, if Kieran was smart, he would just not forfeit anybody and just top deck a whole bunch of cards and just end the game. <laughs> Not deploy anybody else, just battle, don't draw destiny, let yourself get hit, and just peel like everything else you can, and then draw the rest. <laughs> Before you put those, because he's got like eight cards in his hand right now. And the longer this game goes, the each turn, Luke can put one back. It increases differential. He'll find ways to... Uh, He's counting right now. I have to say, he's probably got to have fewer than, you know, maybe a dozen cards at best down. He battles. Excuse me. He's got a stunning leader and then lose two, which is essentially the same as if he got drained for three. I'll give him credit. He's not just throwing in the towel yet. He's trying to see if he can't get one more thing going his way. You know, if by some miracle he were to hit Luke and then play like an all-too-easy or something like that uh, and make him a captive, that could have uh, made a big difference, but he's just going to activate and draw up. He's telling him he can put Walkling out of play if he wants to retrieve one, which he doesn't even have to pay for because he doesn't even have it out, so he'll pop that, retrieve one. Yeah, and he can't put any cards back. Let's see if we get a count here. That's a pretty thick pile. <laughs> this is probably well above 20. He has almost no loss pile either, so we'll probably just count backwards. That's probably close to almost 30. going to talk for a second. I want to see if he'll actually get a pile count. One, ten, twenty, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Yeah, that's pretty rough. So, that will wrap up game one here with this mess. Yeah. That's not what I wanted to do at all. All right. So, that was game 1. Oh, we'll take a quick second here, recover, recoup. And then we will look at two more new cards that kind of all fit this theme. These are our next two cards, which are two of the sites. So we get the system, which is a 2-1 system. Once during any deploy phase, you can use a force to relocate Luke between any two Octo sites. So during any deploy phase, you can bounce Luke around between whatever sites you possibly need him to be at. Dark sites text is while you occupy an Octo site, its game text is canceled, and players may not force drain here. So similar to Dagobah, neither side can force drain at that system. It's kind of why a lot of these go over Dagobah locations, just to kind of reiterate the similar rule structure. Uh, then they also get this 2-1 site, the cliffs. If Luke is here or out of play, force projection is immune to sense. The dark side text is, while Luke here, attrition against you everywhere is plus one. So you could use, so far we've seen the, the saddle which lets you subtract two from their power, uh, or you could bounce Luke over to the cliffs and then add one to attrition everywhere. Uh, this would probably be pretty helpful to do 
you know, possibly, dur you know, you put during when you're going to get battled, Luke's at the saddle, so you can subtract two from their power to keep you from getting overflowed. And then during your turn, maybe you pop Luke over here, and then you can battle them in two or three spots uh, and add extra to attrition and all that fun stuff. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got. We've got four more spoilers left. Four more yet to go. So let's take a look at our next game. That would be this matchup here. Just give me a second here while we load up. All right, it looks like this is going to be a pretty long game. So we may not do all of these tonight. Yes, Octo has the same deployment restrictions similar to Dagobah is what we've been told. Um, where only specific, nobody can really deploy there, only specific characters, etc. The usual shenanigans. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to do the quarterfinals tonight. And then I will do the semifinals another night. I was hoping maybe the games were called kind of short, like the uh, the first game. It was 32, you know, the first file was like 30 minutes. I figured hopefully in the second game, especially since it was very lopsided, maybe they wouldn't play it all the way out. Um, you know, just get them down to the point, which ISB against EBO, you know, EBO is going to put 15 cards on the table, like right off the bat. So all you really have to do is make them lose like <laughs> seven or eight cards, and then they're already below the point where they can win the matchup. So. Oh. So we've got, do they have a code clearance, quad drive yards, and Imperial Arrest Order. Dark Side's got Wackling, and I can't tell thinking that's like my father that he started there but I can't quite see because of the glare it looks like the uh, the I'm, I'm that thinking sometimes it's a they have weird AIs but yeah it's the uh, the Ryan Jellison kind of deck where you just kind of use the EBO stuff to get activation and then just kind of go I think that's what Ryan was using at the uh, at the MPC or maybe an event before that uh, at um, Endor. That's what deck he used at Endor. Yeah, there's a few different variations on this because you can use a new secret base to get systems that have two icons. So then you can pull Dagobah and then pull the Hut for extra activation, and then you basically have like 15 activation, and you really have no battlegrounds really that they can drain at, um, except Hoth. You don't really even, some of them don't even bother to even, they don't even set up EBO. They're not really playing EBO, it's really just a Hoth CRV platform. Against ISB, why not start Haven? You don't usually want to start Haven just on the off chance. Oh, I didn't do it. I swear. Because um, you're not really gonna you're gonna pull your guys first to the ground. I don't know. I don't like starting Haven. I mean, Wackling can pull it anyway. Um, I don't necessarily like starting Haven personally because. They go first, and if they happen to have a ship and want to just throw it down and cancel it, well, then you just lost one of your better cards for, you know, no reason. You're going to deploy, if you're playing EBO, you're going to deploy your guys to the ground for the first turn or two anyway to get that set up. So you have time to find Haven. You can draw it, you get it in your opening hand, or you just walkling for it. So, I don't know. I guess it's a personal preference if you've had success starting it. Um, but that's not probably something that I would necessarily do or recommend.
I always feel like it's the threat of Haven that keeps people from going to Hoth. Because they just assume that if they go there, you're going to slap Haven down and then kind of beat the crap out of them when you drop like five ships and get three Battle Destiny. Um, so if Haven's already there on the table and they have an opportunity to possibly cancel it, then they've just taken one of your bigger bullets out of your gun. So uh, I think he started the 2-0 site. Sometimes you see people use the uh, the Coruscant system. Probably a little less now with Tanev being as popular as it is. They'll force you to put uh, Blount on the ground. And then that looks like Fondor, I believe. Sometimes we see an ISP, we'll see Bespin and the Free Executor stuff. Uh, but Fondor is also pretty good. Fondor has the extra benefit game text of doing stuff to mess around with uh, Corellian Corvettes. Their power and forfeit gets reduced, so um, you'd be surprised how often that ends up making a difference. You know, Tanev is only like, I think it's minus four, too, for the forfeit. So things like uh, Spiral reacting and then forfeits for only three. It's just like, oh god, that's a waste. Tanev only goes for four. Lightmaker would only forfeit for one. So. <laughs> And then he's got another system, maybe Kashyyyk. It's a 2-1. I think that's Kashyyyk based on the shading. But I can't really tell for certain. I just thought you would be as excited that your favorite... Hey now, boys. Play nice. Repio to the war room. Got the docking bay out, and I think that Radis maybe. I'm just trying to get a couple cards out of his hand. All right, so maybe he is actually going to play EBO and just play a bit more mains heavy on the ground. who that is. He looks like Radis. Repeal back. That looked like the uh, effective repair starship lev combo. And he did that into a Luke's bionic hand. And then he's going to rescue in the clouds. Didn't get to see what he took or what his options were.
this will certainly be a much uh, slower, more methodical game. And there we've got a Mustafar. I think is what that was. And then he's going to use one and go get the castle. See, that makes sense. That's good activation, good locations. If you're running Kuat, there's really no reason, very little reason, shall we say, not to run Mustafar and then the castle for your, you know, some extra quick 2-0 activation. Um, then you don't have to worry about playing pullers and things like that for the bridge or the security tower. Just, But uh, this definitely seems like a very space-heavy version of ISB. He's got three systems to try and cover, so... And none of them are Bespin. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One for him is thirteen. It's pretty solid. I can't quite tell who that is. I think that's supposed to be Luke. I guess we're going to see if he gets a lightsaber on him in a second. I think that's Luke. Could be somebody else. I can't quite. I see the Jedi icon. It looks like in the top left corner, but can we just watch a different game? <laughs> uh, yeah, tomorrow or later in the week, we'll watch the uh, the semifinals which will be the winner of this match versus uh, Bastion, I believe, are the two files that we have. So. That's an EPP Obi. Then he's going to draw some cards. Was a meal on camera. The finals, their game one match was recorded. Um, there was, uh, it's giving me an error when it's uploaded though, that it's, uh, says it's still processing, but it's been doing that since two days, uh, since yesterday. So I can't imagine it's still processing. I'm thinking maybe it just got a, a bad version when it uploaded, but I'll have to see if, uh, we can get that fixed and take a look at it. Yeah, we've got. This we've got one match for the quarterfinals, one for the semifinals, and then only game one of the finals, as they did not play game two. All right, there's an executor to Fondor. Now we got our first ship on the table. We'll see who we got piloting that. No, we won't see who we got piloting that. Why do I want to say that that's that, that Mithrondu guy? Oh, no, it's Colonel Wolfie Laren. And then Officer Evax. I think maybe they're, he's changing the order. Because uh, you would never want to deploy Colonel Wolfie Laren first. 
because he lets you activate for each of the other guys. So you always want to deploy him last so you get the extra activation. So I guess he's going to play them in the opposite order, play Evax first. I forget what Evax is, if Evax has. Actually, I don't think that's not a virtual Evax. He just subtracts one from a Destiny draw, I think, right? No, I actually think he's just a leader, just forfeits for seven. I don't think Evax actually does anything useful. you done the featured matches already? Uh, no, Queso's doing all the featured matchups from day one. Um, I forget which videos we have from day one. I would assume Emil is going to be in there. Emil. Emil. Uh, I always butcher his first name. It's not, it's It's accidental. Because I think depending on uh, what particular country and or dialect you're from, you're going to pronounce that E in a different way. Uh, that looks like a 5d6. So he's got three agents on the table now. And I guess that's one of the few scump links on the table. see he's going to count how much force did he spend did he activate it extra and he's going to move it I'm guessing that that makes sense then. Yeah, he's going to move it to Kashyyyk. Where he'll now get the extra force drain. He's paying three force to use walklings once per game to go get an effect. And he is going to get the haven out. I know you guys may not be the most excited about, uh, you know, the potential outcome of this game, given the stats from game one. But, you know, think about it. How often are European players even in camera matches, right? Unless you come to America, uh, none of them have really been in, in camera matches. So uh, we definitely want to make sure these guys get their due credit uh, and their time to showcase their unique talents and abilities. And... Uh, you know, also this Hoth deck is not one that we have really seen much uh, in featured matchups. So being able to, there's the lightsaber now for Luke uh, to go with, I guess that's the bionic hand on him. So yeah, so being able to, uh, to showcase some additional players and their abilities is always a good thing. There's a cheap Tantive. Uh, ships deploy minus two, pilots minus one from Haven. So that was a two cost Tantive. That's a three cost Hera. And since practically everyone in, uh, <laughs> in this deck will be an Imperial, that's currently three battle destiny between her and Haven and the ability. And I have no idea who that was. 
I think his hand's upside down now at this point, too. And he'll pull battle order. Yep, battle plan, rather. This is, of course, this is a cool play, Matt. I like, you know, whoever came up with the time to uh, to do this. I know that they had done something like this when they were designing the new player decks, I think it was. Um, that they had kind of done this to help ke players keep stuff. Or I talked about doing something like this uh, to, to let players kind of keep their piles in the right places and kind of just get the flow of the game and the mechanics down. So, that was a fourth ISB agent of unknown origin. Yeah, not sure who that, that bottom guy is there. I'm not sure which version of Luke that is underneath Obi-Wan, and uh, that's the story we're going with. That could very easily be Master Luke, or uh, Old Man Luke. He'll pay and drain for two. another Obi-Wan. And Darkseid's got two lost piles, it looks like right now. Unless one of those cards is out of play. Unless maybe he played an out of commission or something. And I wasn't, I missed it, maybe. But in either case, they're not in the right spot on the mat. Side's going to need a walker or two to go interact with uh, that pile of guys there. Luke, Obi, two lightsabers, and a bionic hand. Uh, bionic hand pretty much lives for looping around things like Clash of Sabers and Sorry About the Messes. So anything short of uh, a couple of blizzard walkers, it's going to be difficult to do anything at that fourth marker. I don't know if light side, if dark side has a site of their own that they go to. I see tramples, so he's got to have some walkers in there somewhere. There's a temp. All right, there you go. Blizzard four in his hand, Tempest one in his hand. All right, so he's got some walkers. So maybe now it'll be just like the movies. And then he plays target to main generator because he put his opponent on EBO. Boom! <laughs> According to his deck list, it's old man Luke. That would make sense. Destiny 4, immune to attrition. Gotcha, that looks like... Alright, so maybe that's... Oh, he moved the... Uh, sorry, he moved the Coruscant site over here. So this is the Battleground Docking Bay. I guess uh, Cloud City Docking Bay, then? The one that can't get projectioned? 
So he went there with Blizzard 4, pulled Agent Callus. dark time to activate one. Uh, my apologies. I have uh, the advocate sending me text messages just asking me random questions and it's like, um, dude, we're streaming the European championship day two matches come on <laughs> I'm gonna tease him like why aren't you watching That's an interesting story, Belugo. You had EBO there playing Set Your Course, and Hoth is one of the planets they're allowed to blow up and Set Your Course. <laughs> so, Oh, and Tarkin's there as well, and he's with two other ISB agents. So Tarkin can cancel a destiny, Callus adds a destiny. I guess everybody's going to get in to keep them from getting hit and or clashed. The downside to that, of course, is, well, I guess Tarkin would just cancel it. I'm like, if they come down with, like, Chewy and shoot the thing. But it's only armor four. If you drew two fives, Tarkin only cancels one of them. Uh, the whole thing would still get hit. And then uh, you'd be peeling that and all your extra guys. Oh, he just got home from work. At 8.30 at night. That's how hard he works. So we'll stop teasing. Mr. Advocate. And he'll pay the maintenance. And he did that properly. He recirculated and then paid his upkeep the way it's supposed to go. And hopefully his opponent didn't need to remind him about it either. It's always one of those little things that uh, we have some... Issues with. I uh, did also retrieve for weapons display as well because he does occupy a system and a, battle, a battleground system, battleground site. So weapons display says if they deployed and didn't battle, you get to retrieve one, which he then paid for because Secret Plans is out. And that also happens at end of turn, so those cards remain. Damn it. Uh, buffering, so those cards remain in the used pile and don't get recirculated. There's a don't do that again shield. Let's see, was uh, Poltretum goes away, Tarkin goes away. And that would be a drain of. Well, oh, it's a drain of two. One for that and one for the lightsaber. I kept thinking that that was lightsaber proficiency, but it's Luke's hand. So right now, Darkseid has drains of two and two set up, and they can retrieve an agent a turn. They're going to satisfy two battlegrounds, so they don't have to worry about uh, simple tricks. Meanwhile, Lightside is draining for two and one, and they don't have any retrieval, so... It 
if they just keep uh, trading paces back and forth, then that would be advantage ISB, especially with uh, already having won the first round of the matchup by a considerable amount. So Lysai is going to have to do something here to, uh, to shake things up a little bit, and whether that's deploying an extra ship, if they even have extra ships, or if it's really just more of a ground-heavy deck like it seems to be, um, needing to go interact with that Blizzard 4. Okay, and we get Leia Rebel Princess. And everybody's going to quick read her to figure out exactly the way she's worded. But I think she's actually been eroded and doesn't actually... Yeah, she has been eroded. She doesn't actually work the way she's written on the card. Because um, people used to hide her inside a uh, empty <laughs> landed Y-Wing or something as a passenger. And then you couldn't battle her. Because there was no way to be present with her when she was inside the ship and that's a chewy with bowcaster that's the guy that uh you did not want to see because he's gonna take a shot at that and there comes ray so dark side would really need really love to have a trample right about now and he does not battle and instead just draws a couple of cards. Interesting. He was looking at docking by transiting Radis over as well. And opted, I guess, not to do that. I'm not quite sure why he's just sitting at that docking bay. I mean, he just wants to spend the force. He doesn't feel like he needs to. I mean, he could shuttle him up or move him over, but I guess he's just just chilling. got a Stalker in hand. He's got a Tarkin the Bounty. He could go dig out any card he wants. And he's got Tarkin on the table, so you can put it on him, and then you get the extra text. So he paid to drain, so I'm assuming if they're convinced that based on the wording, because of the pa their passengers, that they're not with Leia. I forget exactly how. she's worded. That doesn't sound right to me, but I don't think that that's the way she's worded anymore. That's the way they played it, though. Let me see if I can look her up off screen because that's going to bother me. Yeah, Leia's reworded to say, unless opponent's non-alien character here, their total ability at same site equals zero. So she was eroded, and I guess they didn't quite realize the errata, because he paid to drain, which he shouldn't have to. And then, because the regular version of the card does, I believe she says present, is how she's written on the card, but that's not uh, right.
So, yeah, that seems like that would make the most sense. Is that he didn't battle because he thought that that's the way Leia worked, which is why Darkseid paid to drain. So, they're both kind of going with that. That mentality. This would be a great time to call over a judge and get a ruling. Is this really the way this works? No. Oh, crap. Well, that turn would have been very different. Because now we're going to get into a situation here, too, where they could continue to make this mistake. Like, if Darkseid deploys a character outside the walker, and then they battle, and then Lightside shoots that guy, and sorry about the mess, or clash of sabers to remove that guy from the battle, then they're going to think the battle ends, because now there's no more presence there anymore. So, this could all get really weird. Oh, he's going to trample. And that was an Imperial Command. So he drew a four. Was he going... Who was he going for? He's going to get rid of... Ch he tramples Chewy. Okay. And the trample gets grabbed. So it's one less weapon, and he can't shoot the vehicle anymore. So that certainly makes things a lot better. That is that Ozel? That looks like a Destiny Zero. And there's Six Force. Is that a Vader? That's oh, a Gurry. Gurry is a strong card on a uh, immune to less than twelve Executor. So yeah, so that's going to move all the way over. It's only one parsec from uh, Kashik Kashik to Hoth there, but it uh, seems to have covered the entire board. And everybody's going to get out. So... And now they are going to be vulnerable to things like, uh, like we said, like Clash and Sorry About the Mess when they don't necessarily need to be, unfortunately. So, okay, we'll stop harping on it. They have a, a misinterpretation, or we're not aware that Leia had, was rotted after Kevin Shannon's disastrous Shanstorm pile of crap, where he basically stuck a Y-Wing with Leia on it and Sandworld, so you could, like, never interact with it. And uh, that's also the reason that we have uh, <laughs> the ruling that the, the Sandstorm, the generic desert with a Sandstorm on it, is not a battleground either anymore. So. Alright, so let's see what Light Side's going to come down with. Uh, they're going to do some draining first. They're going to keep using a new secret base to take the Narshada system into hand, which then they keep putting back with 3PO, so that way it's always on the bottom of their deck. Um, and you don't have to risk drawing it for Battle Destiny, and you can just keep cycling yourself a, uh, a free card for a while. And then as you need it later, you know where to find it. Uh, this game probably doesn't make a lot of sense because there's five other systems you could go to instead. He lost General Navarre and Decree. He's going to count Power, 14, 16, I think that's Vandalay, 17, 18, Ozil adds, what, 3. So you're looking at like 23-ish Power? 24, maybe? Somewhere in that range. Uh, he's only getting one destiny, he's immune to less than 12, and he's got a bajillion in forfeit from all those pilots. I think everybody forfeits for seven. Or, well, I think Vandalay maybe. Vandalay and Ozzel are six, the other three guys are all sevens, I think, because of uh, a rushed order. Meanwhile, Lightside's got a... Uh, 
less than reasonable, probably about 10 power. They got multiple battle destiny draws, but Guri's limiting them, so unless you have a way to get rid of Guri, they're not going to be able to draw those extras. And in terms of ground power, that's probably close to 20 there as well, with two battle destiny and the ability to cancel a draw with Tarkin somewhere during the course of the battle. They can also use the Tarkin's bounty to, uh, to peek at the top card of either player's reserve deck. Oh, gold leader and gold one. That'll make them pay for those extra destiny draws. None of those guys have draw if unable to otherwise text, so if, if Darkseid has to spend force for things, I believe I saw draw their fire in his hand earlier as well, if that were to hit the table. And I can't quite see which ship that is. Was that Rogue One, maybe? That might be the AI of Rogue One. Yeah, fortunately the camera's not quite in focus all the way over there on the edge, so we can't quite see those cards very clearly. Looks like he played Justice, or I'm sorry, Evac Control. Stacked an under attack and a relatively unprotected. Two cards I'm sure he would have loved to draw in for Battle Destiny, should he ever actually battle there. There's to the draw their fire. Um, but picking up the under attack could also come in handy uh, if, uh, if Ray somehow lives over there. Battles, he paid one to retrieve one to get Chewy back and force Dark Side to lose one. That looks like an Admiral Chirinu. I don't know what card that was that he just picked up. But that will prevent Tarkin from canceling and it will also uh, prevent Callus from drawing extra. Now he gets to do stuff. He gets to activate a force. And then he drew a five. Did he not swing? I guess maybe he didn't have enough destiny left to swing and draw battle destiny and... He's grossly outpowered. He resiliences Ray back into hand. And then she gets cold feet id. And then he loses Leia as well to cover the remainder of the difference. And Tarkstein has to lose something, and they're just going to lose the Blizzard 4 to keep their agent package together. He's going to battle in space. He's going to retrieve Leia. And Darkseid loses another Lieutenant Pole treat him, or the same one that they probably have retrieved by now. Draws looks like a ship for Destiny, maybe the Chimera, I think. After f utilizing 5d6's text and activating another card. Oh, 
he had to pay one because of gold leader before doing the draw. So they fixed that. All right. And then he'll lose the ship. And she looks like another 5d6, possibly. And that Radis guy shuttles up, finally. So light side's got uh, a pretty good power situation over there at that Hoth system, and they, but dark side did force light side to put like seven more cards on the table. So if you're playing just a strictly uh, lose by less than you won the first game by, uh, Kuhn did exactly what he needed to do there. He forced Kieran to commit some cards to the table. Uh, he did let him retrieve a couple with the draw their fire and stuff like that. But he does have his ground site back. He could easily just run away, move the executor to any of the other four systems, and uh, and force light side to come chase him while he continues to just get his ground drains in. Nice, he's got a foil signal with his uh, see you around kid slip over it. Power count. It's probably still right in the same boat, right? He didn't lose anything. He just top decked a couple cards. So I think they're both pretty much exactly. They're pretty much almost even in power there. So it's really just come down to destiny draws and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, dark side's not going to get cleared anytime soon. They just have to keep drawing. mediocre to start picking off some of the light side stuff, but every time you do that, though, you're letting him retrieve cards with Draw Their Fire, so you can use Tarkin's Bounty like you just did there, take a quick peek, see what's on top, and then decide if he wants to battle or not. Then you start playing the mind games. Now he's going to top deck it, thinking it's a bad destiny. It was. It was solo. Um, Sometimes that's the way to, you know, you start getting into those fun little psychological games with your opponent where you leave the card there and then you battle them. They're like, oh, well, this card must suck. Let me throw it away. And then, you know, it's another, like, Destiny 6 card. And you're like, ha ha, I tricked you. Um, yeah. Then I'll play Command, I guess, to add a Destiny there. See if he forces his opponent to pick up a card. That's a cold feat. And that's a guy. Can't see which guy. Stop waving it around. That's Veers. Okay, so he pays one, he draws the cold feet, and then he pays one, and then he draws Veers. So he has a six. Uh, and apparently a spiral came down as a react for free. Because uh, it deploys minus three from the react and minus two from Haven, so... That's actually going to give light side again a little bit more power. And we'll see if dark side has to forfeit any any characters or whether they just uh,
to top deck a couple cards. I'm looking to see. I can figure out exactly what ship that is. I wanted to see if it was maybe if it was the ghost. It could be, but that doesn't quite. It could be ghost. I don't know why. I've never seen anybody using that card much, but. It could also be the AI. Uh, Rogue One, the donor foil, which uh, Kieran did donate, so he would have received. I think it's at least a $50 donation to the Players Committee. Gets you a couple of cool things, including a limited alternate image foil of Rogue One. You can find information about the donor program on the PC forums under the announcements. Sub-tab there. It was Anakin. Okay. So he loses Anakin to the draw. Colonel Wolf Yularen dies. He puts Wackling on a play and retrieves Anakin. And the Executor runs away. He looks like... Tarks actually lost two guys off the ship, so they were really down in power. So yeah, they're wisely running away. They'll retrieve an ISB agent, and they'll just kind of keep doing the things that they do to drag this game out and uh, try and limit light side's ability to retrieve cards. I mean, I'm sure at this point we're just looking at the pile of stuff that light side has on table. Uh, we're under the point at which uh, Kuhn has to be threatened about losing this matchup, but you know, he can lose this game by 20 cards and still win the match. So that's all he's trying to do. And uh, I think he's at that point. So he just activated, and he just took Anakin back into hand. Uh, and since Anakin would have been like the third or fourth card from the bottom of his deck, That tells me he's got less than 20, just based on how much he activated. Or rather, how much he's allowed to activate. He only gets like 13, I think. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, he gets 15. So. We'll get a drain of 2 and 1. He'll lose the Stalker. A force push and one more card. Under normal circumstances, I have a feeling this would probably be a game that would go to time if this was an, <laughs> if this was a one hour time limit game. Uh, this would very likely be a game where time was called. Um, time may still be called. quarterfinal matchups to get an hour and 15 minutes because they're a little bit more competitive. And he throws away a Blizzard 1 as well. But ISB is always one of those decks. It's it's very grindy, very control oriented. It's mitigating damage. Sometimes you'll even see it use things with uh, you know, undercover U3PO, Dark Waters, or Image of a Dark Lord, things like that that it can use to restrict drains on the ground plus then you know the extra minus one that the objective gives them so they really just kind of lock their opponent down to doing very minimal points of damage each turn and then they usually just throw away an extra isb agent and then just retrieve it so they continue to just keep offsetting it while they just nickel and dime you away for one here drain for one over here or drain for two over here it's like drain two go lose a guy retrieve a guy drain two go um that's kind of a good scenario for <laughs> ISB. Um, we get Jin. Usually doesn't last very long. Um, whether there's Yasein Isard coming down to break her cover, which would be potentially good, but it is at a docking bay, so Jin could just docking bay transit away to uh, to avoid the beat down there. Uh, or more likely, we'll see perhaps never Yalnal. 
um, since there are so many spies and all, all the ISP agents become spies, um, that's usually a good way to just get rid of light side undercover spies. You just play a Destiny 6 interrupt that gets rid of them. Looks like there's 20 minutes left in this video file. He's going to Odin Nestlower First Aid and move some people. He moved Obi over to the Mustafar Castle. I believe you just have to move from a battleground to an exterior site, I think is how. Ha, ah, it's not the window I wanted. Close that. My apologies. Yeah, now I broke it. Target your characters at one site to transport to an exterior or battleground site. So, yep. The site they moved to meets that requirement. And now we're going to see light side spread out a little bit, try and get an extra space drain in. an extra ship or two. Ah, uh, spread the ships out a little bit. So that'll certainly pick up the drain potential for light side. Now they're threatening uh, quite a bit more on the table, and they do lose the Hujix. There's not really uh, too much that they could potentially get interacted with and get hurt that they would need that, so that's not bad. He's got two characters left in his reserve deck, so unlikely to want to battle anyway. Trample may have been his only way to get rid of undercover spies. He probably has two in a deck like this, but he would need a walker, and he's kind of lost a few of those already. He does have Blizzard 2 in his hand. We just saw that there. So that could be plan B for getting rid of Jin. If he can find his other one or if he has it. Meanwhile, Lightside sitting on a Poe Dameron in hand. Yeah, it looks like they, I think that first red card in his hand is a second copy of Trample, but his destiny right now is not going to be good enough. And he's got Blizzard 2 and Tempest 1 in hand still. Um, his destiny won't, he has two characters in his deck that won't get rid of Jin. This turn, he'll have to track something around and set it up for next turn. But he will deploy one of the walkers. Yep, it's going to be Blizzard 2. Yeah, Iceheart should be somewhere in the deck, whether or not he can find her yet, though. He's going to move the Executor to Mustafar to block that second drain.
Guri's still on board the Executor, so he's in still in decent shape there with him being limited to just one draw. And then he'll draw and retrieve a guy. But light side is going to gain some momentum here because they're going to do two, four, five in four straining this turn and potentially could battle. They're also going to retrieve one from weapons display because a card with ability was deployed in Blizzard 2 and a battle did not take place. Well, it looks like a Vader in his hand, but kind of hard to see from here. Throws away a conquest. And top deck's Thrawn. And then that was another 5d6 and a Colonel Wolfio Laren. And a Pole Tritium. So he just lost f Thrawn and three ISB agents off the top of his deck. That's also always been a, uh, a difficulty, a drawback for these big blue decks like uh, ISB and uh, entanglements and that kind of stuff. You run a lot of characters and stuff, so you have the ability to start drawing some of them for, for Destiny quite often. And now he'll spread out and move the Tandiv. And then he'll probably move that ship away to one of the other systems. Yeah, he's just going to keep them spread out now. He forced him to commit a bunch of guys onto his executor through draining. He's forced him to lose at least three other Star Destroyers that we've counted, uh, Conquest, Stalker, and the Chimera. And here comes Trample number two. And... Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, he perimeter scans to protect from trample. Doesn't that not work with undercover spies? I thought it said unless undercover. Did they just totally misplay that too? I gotta go to my trusty card list over here. Give me just one second. But I'm pretty sure that they just did that wrong. So these guys are 0 for 2. Perimeter scan V. Cancel trample. Parentheses. Unless targeting an undercover spy. So, yeah. That was not correct either. All right. Well, uh, Silver Glen, if you happen to talk to either of these guys in your European players forum, uh, I hope you're taking notes and you can pass along all of this constructive feedback that uh, may certainly uh, help them improve their future performances. But it is hard, especially when, we are, when we're all playing on Jemp all the time. Sometimes you just get used to, uh, you know, the game enforcing the rules for you, and uh, sometimes then you forget those critical thinking skills that you need uh, to have. I mean, yes... It does say right on, on that particular card. It does say specifically unless undercover, 
Um, but hey, it's Vader. He's gonna battle Obi. Oh, and then draw their fires out so he would get to retrieve one, potentially. Unless he got buried and I missed it while I was looking it up, the, the card text. Because usually when you run draw their fire, you run a couple of barriers. So when they come to battle you, you stop that and then get the battle and do the retrieval on your turn. He's going to grab, I don't know what that is. And then he's going to imbalance to make him lose one after he retrieves with the firepower. So looks like he got Poe back. the Jedi live. It's hard to see from the angle, but I think that uh, Kieran, who's on the bottom, is down to about 12 cards. And we're going to get some force draining in here. Uh, for a total of four, I believe. And Kuhn at the top of the screen is probably down about the same amount. Um, they both have a lot of cards on the table. Oh, we got an Anakin coming down. Anakin fighting Vader at Mustafar Vader's castle. Does it get any more iconic than that right there? Including Obi-Wan? I mean, jeez, you got Obi-Wan with Anakin turning him into Vader. It's like, that should be like a, a thing right there. Draws a command. Dark side's just going to peel a bunch of cards to keep Vader in play. He put a card back with Like My Father. And he's going to use that force and move that ship away. Yeah, light side should win this game. Yeah, it looks like light side, dark side's down to like six cards left or something like that. And I can do a little bit of draining. Drain for one. Vader could battle Obi. He'd cause one more force loss. Both, uh, no, light side battles for free. Well, both players battled for free because of Anakin, but it looks like he's clutching a clash there. So he's going to battle for free and he's going to retrieve one. And his opponent's going to lose the clash. Which is interesting because he had the two force left. So he swings, and if those are the right cards, and that's a seven, and then he's hit, 
he could have clashed him out of the battle here, prevented him from drawing battle destiny, and Obi would have got to live, and then he'd been able to force drain for two more the following turn. But I think they both can kind of see the writing on the wall and know where this game's going. So again, there's no need to get uh, try and get too clever. That Vader's immune to clash. Oh yeah, you're right. That one is. I forgot. He's got all that cool text. He's immune to clash. And sorry about the mess. And so there you go. I tried to get too clever, and it doesn't even work, which is usually what happens. So, yeah. Dark side down to less than 10 cards. Light side sitting on about uh, just as many themselves. But they're going to be draining for, I think, four here. Oh, five, because the Vader's not on table anymore. And then there's two more there. He's going to keep that imbalance combo just in case he's got any weird tricks up his sleeve. That's an effective repairs to get a ship back. And just move that ship over. And move that ship over. And then just draw one or two. So he stacks everybody back up. To make it so Darkseid doesn't want to battle. And then when Darkseid moves away, then he'll just spread everybody back out. So he's going to draw. Call it a day. Can't drain, can't do anything. I'm just going to move. You've got like six cards left. Good game. All right. Thank you very much uh, to Floris and the other Dutch players for uh, videotaping some games. Uh, this will conclude our quarterfinal matchup between these two. Um, we will not do the semifinal matchup tonight because that's going to be like another like two plus hours. So we'll do that one later in the week. And uh, hopefully then we'll actually have our surprise mystery package from 